Okay, um, question three, part B. So this time we're writing a um, pseudocode algorithm. So we'll write a pseudocode algorithm, that's what we've got to do. Let's read the question first of all. A one dimensional array called temperatures has 25 elements beginning at index one. It holds values that range between minus 20 and 100 inclusive. Write a pseudocode algorithm using a single loop to find the lowest value in this array and output the result only once. You do not need to declare or populate the array, that's quite helpful. Um, because we haven't got that much space anyway. Okay, now one of the things I always say when you're doing a question like this and you have to write some code or some pseudocode is to kind of annotate on a question all the important things you have to do and that way you don't miss anything. Now there's a whole other set of videos that I've done that can take you through this with lots of examples um, like this one or a bit easier and some of that are they're a bit more, I wouldn't say harder, but there's more to them. And what I usually say to look for is look for any inputs, any outputs, any processing, and then any loops. So straight away we know there are no outputs, sorry, no inputs, but we do have an output here. And we do have a loop. We it tells us we have to write a single loop, and we know that loop is here. That's uh, 25 elements. So I'm going to write loop. And so that's outputs. We got loop and processing. We've got here. I'm just going to do a p for that. So those are the main parts. So I can make sure I get address each of those things. So the first thing we need to do is we need to um, we need to set up our loop now. There's one thing we need to do before that, because we're finding the uh, lowest value, we need to give the we need to set up an initial value that we can use to compare against. So if you're ever finding the lowest value of some of say an, the numbers in an array, you always set the lowest value to be something that's bigger than all of the other values in the array. That means when you do your first comparison, the first value in the array will become the lowest value. And then similarly, if you're finding the largest value in an array, you always set your <coughs> your initial value to be smaller than anything in the array. And again, that way, the first value that you compare then becomes the largest value, and we use that to compare all the others. So uh, we're finding the lowest value. So it's quite common to use min for that, but you can call it something else as long as it suggests it's the smallest or minimum value. And I'm going to assign. Go ahead and assign that now. We could assign it, remember we're setting it to a, a big, bigger number. We could set it to 100, because 100 is the biggest number you can expect to get. Um, but I, I always say set it to a number bigger than the, the data that you have. So we can set it to 101, or you can set it to 999,000, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to set it to 101. So I know that's going to be bigger than anything inside the array. Now we need to set up our loop. Now, because we, it tells us there are 25 elements, then we know how many times the loop is going to run. So we can use a for loop for that, which is the loop structure we use when we know how many times we're going to loop or iterate. Um, right, so normally you might write for i assign 1 to 25. Um, I can't remember the mark scheme, but sometimes in the mark scheme there may be marks for using correct identifiers or correct names for everything. Now i is a variable that the loop uses to store the current value of the loop. <coughs> In this case it'll start off at 1, then it'll be 2, etc, etc. So um, I'm just going to call it, because it, it's, yeah, because it's we're looking at temperatures, I'm just going to call it temp. And we're going to assign that 1, 2, 25. So each time we go around, it's going to be the position of each temperature. So it'll be temperature, the first time it will be 1, so that's the position of the temperature at value 1. Okay, great. Next we need to compare the each temperature in the array with the minimum, the current minimum value. Now, if you uh, forgot how to set up um, how to use the if to do comparison. Actually, there's a helpful, on the same page here, there's a helpful um, example for us if you wanted to look at that. So we need to say if, and 
temperatures. Now, remember temp is storing the number each time we go through the loop. So I'm going to say temp. So initially it will be 1. So temperatures 1 is the first element in the array. Then it will be temperatures 2. So we're going to say if it's less than min, then, now it doesn't matter if you write then at the on this line here or underneath it doesn't matter I'm just running out of room so I'm going to do it here if temperatures temp is less than min then we want to set because we're finding the smallest value we're going to actually set it we're going to set min to temperatures temp I'm going to write it nice and small so it fits there we go so let's look at this. So if temperature's temp is less than min, so initially it will be because it's 101, then min is then going to become whatever this value is, temperature's temp. That works, that works for me. So let's finish off our if. So we want an end if here. And let's finish off our for loop. So we want next temp. So when we go back to our annotations, you can see we've set up the loop and we've done the processing, but, and this is where this is useful now, we haven't done the output yet. I see so many people lose it, will lose a mark on this question and they've done the hard part. They just forgot to write output. Conversely, let's say you really just got a bit flummoxed and you didn't know what to write for it. And you just, perhaps you wrote um, output um, temperature down the bottom, then you should get a mark for that. So it's, it's quite a handy technique doing these little annotations. Um, just an, another note on this. It says here output the result only once. And that's suggesting that they want you to output it outside of the loop. So somewhere down here. Because if you, if you put it inside the loop, it's going to output it every single time. So that's, that's why they put that there. So let's just add that in. So uh, output the result only once. So output... Um, again, I'm not sure if the mark scheme has any marks for outputting some helpful text, but minimum temp is, and then I'll put a comma to separate them, and then I'm going to write min, which is storing the value of the minimum temp. But let's just have a quick look at the mark scheme for that. I've gone over the my ex my answer but let, hey let's have a look so they've set min to 100 which is fine because 100 is the um, biggest value in the array so when we do the comparison um, it if it's not the same so if it's not if it's not less than there, there will be 100 so 100 will be still be the minimum value so that's fine but um, if we set it to 101 that's just one one way that's helpful for remembering how to do this. Just always set the minimum value to something way bigger than anything that could be inside the array. So they've said count. For count, sign 125. That's fine. I've said temperatures because each position in the array is a temperature. So that's fine. And they've got if temperatures count is less than min, then min set temperature count, which is exactly what we've got on mine. And if next count and output those temperature is. So I'm um, looking at the mark scheme, uh, initialize variable to store the number. Yeah, so that's what we've done here. So we've initialized a variable min that so we can um, compare that with the other numbers in the array. We got a loop structure to go around 25 times. Yeah, we used an if um, here to check the array element is less than the current value. If it is, We've down here. We've set it, set it to um, this, this to the whatever the temperature is to the lowest value, and then we've got our output as well. So you can see, even if you didn't have a clue what was going on here, you could get that uh, fifth or MP5 mark there just by writing output the lowest temperature is and uh, min or lowest or whatever you want. Right. So um, let's uh, stop that one. Um, hopefully that was helpful, and then we'll move on to question four.